workers are accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a woman beginning when she was a teenager. And police in Abington just placed an officer on leave. Sources say in connection with this case, WVZ's Beth Germano shows us how the Stoughton police chief is trying to keep those officers from ever working again. I stand before you today as a civil servant who is heartbroken. Stoughton Police Chief Donna McNamara vowing transparency as she details how three officers are accused of abusing their positions of authority to carry out an inappropriate sexual relationship with a young woman for several years. Through a sustained and deliberate com combination of lies, deceit, and treachery. The now former officers are William Farwell, pictured here, and his brother Matthew, who they say first met the young woman when she was 13 in a police explorers program. Also accused, former Deputy Chief Robert Devine, all allegedly preying upon a vulnerable teen who looked up to officers. The admiration led her to form relationships with men who were willing to take advantage of her. At age 27, investigators say Matthew Farwell began the relationship with the young woman who was then 15. Texts and explicit exchanges were shared while on duty. Investigators say when he broke off the relationship in February of 2021 when she was 23, she died days later. The medical examiner determining it was suicide and she was pregnant. These men violated their oaths and they are unfit to serve as police officers. The district attorney says without victim testimony, charges are unlikely, saying in a statement, the investigation to date has not developed a prosecutable statutory rape case against any individual. But the chief makes clear what the investigation has developed. The scope of this problem in our agency has been identified and pulled out by the roots. The chief has moved to have the officers immediately decertified so they never serve in another department. In Stoughton, I'm Beth Germano, WBZ What I'm about News. to brief you on is something deeply troubling to me as a human being and as a police chief. Three former Stoughton police officers, the focus of a 19-month-long internal affairs investigation for allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with a young woman who was later found dead inside her home. Sandra Birchmore's body was found on February 4th, 2021. Her death ruled a suicide. But was it? Given the circumstances of her final night and what we know about the last person to see her alive, leave many that have doubt. The fact of the matter is it just doesn't make any sense to me that she would kill herself, and especially knowing she's pregnant. I don't, Sandra wouldn't kill her baby. This is The Case, Season 2, Sandra. Episode 1 drops November 29th. What we found was a historical pattern. The adult, the, the officers with levels of supervision over it were using it as a means of having relationships with young, with teenage girls. The case is available on Apple Podcasts and wherever podcasts can be heard. You can also find us at thecasepodcast.com and on Twitter at thecasepodcast. How many people should have protected her and they didn't. And she expected these men to and one after another just, just let her down and ruin her. Welcome to the show tonight, Mike Crawford. Young jerks, what a wild night last night was. I want to thank uh, everyone who... Watched that episode, supported us last night, supported uh, the young jerks and on social media too. Uh, hopefully it won't be as hot and wild as last night. Maybe, who knows? We've got another uh, difficult subject. Uh, we're talking about justice for Sandra Birchmore. We just played an intro video with uh, from Barstool Sports uh, from their podcast, Kirk Minahane, uh, the case podcast check that out if you haven't listened to it i, I just wanted to highlight that because i think that's really uh the best of the kind of coverage that's come out on sander birchmore which we're going to talk about tonight i've listened to that podcast it's a great podcast check it out on barstool sports uh we have a guest tonight uh she runs she's the admin on a facebook page uh called justice for sander birchmore 
uh, Mizzy, let's bring her up and she can introduce herself and tell us about herself. Hey, Mizzy, how you doing? Pretty good, Mike. How are you? Good. Um, well, my name is Mizzy. I am a content creator for the page called The Mixed Girl in a Mixed Up World. Um, I interview families who, who a loved one has been murdered. And I saw the news footage of Sandra's case um, back when the report first came out. And I was like, my jaw was on the floor and I was yelling at my TV. And I was like, you know, I kept checking in on the case and there was really nothing, nothing else being put out there. And my friend messaged me and said, what is up with the Sandra Birchmore case? And I said, um, yeah, there's a big issue with that. Her son had been murdered and she does a lot of research on other cases. And her and I, for two weeks, she put her son's case aside. His name is Brandon Embry, if you want to look up his case. Um, she put his case aside for a few weeks and her and I just dug in as much as we could to see what we could find. You know, we looked, we did the virtual tour of her apartment building to find out what kind of door handles they had, they, their handles, they're not knobs. We just did everything that we could possibly do for research. We like looked up how much um, assistance, uh, school assistance, teachers assistance make it, it, the price range, all little things like that. And she said, you know, Mizzy, if you make a Facebook page and run it, I'll do do a, um, I was going to say auction, a uh, petition, and I'll run that because she had to go back to work on her son's case. And um, that's, that's how I got here. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, something you've been supporting for a while. We, we um, it's funny, I think we might have been the first to talk about it on like a YouTube show uh, through a candidate we had on from the Workers Party. She talked about this right away when it happened on our show, but we didn't get into like the deep dive, like the case podcast did. Yeah. Which I think they did the best work on this so far. Kirk Minahan, thank you so much, Barstool Sports, for covering this. Absolutely. Um, they did an amazing job. And I always refer people to that if they want to dive into the case because they did such a thorough deep dive of her, her story. And we've been trying, like, I know that you've been working on this for quite a while now. Um, we've been trying to get you on for a while. It didn't work yeah. out like, on both ends. We had so much issues. So it's like catastrophes, but this is like the perfect time to do it perfect. now because there's a lot that's happening. Finally, there was a lull and now all of a sudden there's this breaking news that we should talk about tonight. And also yeah. something you guys are going to be doing, uh, that people can help out on as well. But let's yeah. talk about the latest on this. I mean, we, I think we could rehash and, and just for people that aren't, familiar with Sandra Birchmore, we can definitely play the elevator video that Kirk Minahan, you know, put out there. Uh, Cause I think it has a lot to do with the details of the case, but I think mo a lot of people already know all about that. So I want to just get to the latest developments, which is really exciting. People are commenting on it. Um, the attorney general has all of a sudden taken over this case from the North York County DA. Apparently what's going on with that? Well, I, I, I suspect it possibly could have something to do with the FBI investigation into the Karen Reed case. This is me speculating this. I've had sources tell me that the FBI has been looking into her case, but I have no proof of that. It's just, you know, speculation, but it would make sense because people have been saying that the FBI was there before they started getting into John, the John O'Keefe murder case. And if they had been there before that, they, they would already have a lot of the case developed and they might've turned it over to um, the, the attorney general, which it should have, the attorney general should have stepped in a long time ago. She, when she was um, campaigning, she invoked Sandra's name on Twitter when the case, the the, um, the 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 internal report dropped, and she said, uh, "You know, she needs justice. We need to protect all people like Sandra, and Sandra's case needs to be really fully looked into." 
And I didn't know about it. And I had somebody, you know, a source send it to me. So I, I started tweeting at her. I kept going like every few months I'd go back and tweet at her. And I don't know if that helped. Get, did you, get did she ever, her. did she ever respond to you on nope. Twitter? Nope. You know, it's weird too. Like we, we have, you know, we have a few quotes that you sent us from the Boston Globe story because the Boston Globe did a story on this about the attorney general taking over. But what it was really light on the details of why. Like, I would think, and we have it right up on here, the screen. I mean, there's a lot of red flags on why they would do it, but they didn't give a statement. It seems really weird that they took it from the Norfolk County DA, and now yeah. the attorney general has it, and they didn't put out a statement on why that happened. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I suspect that has to something to do with the FBI. I could be wrong. I could be way off base, but it also, you know, there's been a lot more action with people out there. You know, we have the page going on. The page has been up for a year now. Um, you know, we've done a few rallies. Um, we did a, you know, we did a standout last month. We're going to be doing a standout at the end of this month. So I think might be a little more people making noise about it too. So I don't, I don't know, but this is really huge news because Sanders case should have been looked at taken away from Norfolk DAs a long time ago because you have three police officers that did this to a young woman and she winds up dead. And the last person to see her alive is one of those police officers that she was pregnant by. Come on. And he admitted in text messages that he took her virginity and that she was 15 mm. when it started. So that's statutory rape. Why has this man not been charged? Right. And we could talk about the video, too. I think uh, you sent me that. I, I brought it up. I have it uh, over from Barstool Sports. We could bring that up in a second. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is crazy. Like that, nothing's been done, and now the attorney general took it over, and we don't know. It seems like there's such a news desert here. Like, I feel like if this happened in the 1980s, we would have found out that night because these local TV people would have been all over it, even the yeah. Boston Globe. And today, it's like the local media is really lazy on a lot of this stuff. And it's just, I mean, like. Morrissey and Divine know each other. I've posted a few times a post. There's a photo of the two of them standing, look, looking like they went to a prom, the prom together. Like it's, you know, and you know, he was the, he was the, assist, he was the deputy chief of Stoughton. So of course he knows Morrissey. So it's like, it should have been taken out of Morrissey's hands and the, the Massachusetts state police unit that's under him. It should have been taken any, any police, Clearly, he cannot do anything charging, do anything to charge police officers when they commit crimes. Yeah. This, like, look what is going on with the Karen Reed case and look what's going on with Sanders case. They are like, they happen almost a year to the day apart. And I honestly, deep in my heart, I feel like if they didn't pull off what happened with Sandra, I don't know if they would have had the balls to pull off this huge gambit with the Karen Reed, John O'Keefe case. Good point. The same town. This is in Kenton, Massachusetts. Um, we haven't really gotten to the details. I, I just almost assume that most people already know about this case. But, you want me to do a quick rundown? Yeah, can you give a quick rundown for people who don't know? And maybe we'll play that video, too, for Barstool Sports there. That, yeah, uh, the Sandra, you know, she was born in Boston. She grew up in Stoughton. And when she was 13, you know, she, she grew up from a single mother. She lived with her mother, grandmother, and two aunts. Um, so first right there, I want to say that is one thing that bothers me because she did grow up in a loving home. It's just they didn't know what was going on. You know, they thought they were sending her to go be with the police. And who, who would think that the police would do this to their child? So Sandra was, she loved police officers. She wanted to be a police officer. So she had the opportunity to join the Stoughton Police Explorers Program run by Robert Devine, Matthew, and William Farwell. 
And at the age of 13, they started grooming her. And at the age of 15, Matthew was having sex with her, statutory raping her, raping her. Um, and I can't totally kneel down exactly when William and Divine, uh, Robert Divine started, you know, having sex with her, but I, I don't even like to say having sex with her, but I think it was when she was like 18, because Robert Divine used to tell tell girls that he was grooming that he would um oh I'll take you out on a date when you turn 18. So he was he was very, you know, he 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 knew how to play the game. So Sandra um kept I hate to say the word dating, dating Farwell, Matthew Farwell till the day she died. Um in she was hooking up with Robert Devine and William Farwell. And the night of uh, uh, February 1st, 2021, Sandra was, that was the last day she was seen on the, the videotape um, surveillance. And um, around 9.14, Matthew Farwell shows at, at, his house, at her house which is funny that he was there. It was a blizzard. Um, his wife was in the hospital getting ready to have their child the next day. Um, and he walked in with a mask on, his hood up and his head down. So you couldn't identify him. He went into her apartment and he was in there for about 29 minutes. And then he left. He claims he went there to break up with her. He deleted all their, their um, texts and emails. He deleted her from his phone. Mm. Um, he basically tried to erase her. And she didn't show up to work for till the, she didn't show up. So this happened on the first and on the fourth, her work call uh, talk, spoke to the the um, in school p police officer. And he he sent it over to the Canton police and they went and did a wellness check on Sandra. And that's when they found her. No. Jen, she was yeah. in a seated position with the ligature tied around her neck, um, which is very odd because that's basically prison style. It's a, it's a, um, her type of hanging is a pressure hanging where it's you lean forward. It's not like a hanging from like a, a pole or something, which is odd for a 23 year old girl to even know about that. She had other means of doing this. Um, and they ruled it a suicide. And investigating her death, that's when, you know, they were getting called, the Massachusetts State Police were getting calls saying that, that, you know, she was dating Matthew Farwell. And I believe that she was making problems at home, um, at home for him. She was making problems at work for him. And she was pregnant with his child. So that was the big problem. And he had made comments telling her that if you don't get rid of the baby, I, I, I'll take care of it. They had gotten to a physical altercation a few weeks before. Um, and I personally believe that she was murdered. But even if she wasn't murdered, he's the one who did it. The abuse over the yeah. years. There was there was abuse and grooming and all of that. Um, exactly. Who, we got a picture up here. The, one of them is Robert Devine, the guy on the right, right? Yes. And, and the, who, the tall guy is, was the police chief before um, the current police chief. Okay. So here, she, how old do you think she was in this picture? Probably about 13. Cause she was in the 13, maybe 14. <sighs> this and is I mean, not good. How, she looks yeah. like she's 10. I know. And this, this happened for people, you know, as we mentioned, you mentioned Stoughton. Um, but she actually died in Canton. So a lot of the police officers that, you know, have been talked about with the John O'Keefe situation from Canton also involved in this, like yes. Lank and Albert, two of those. Well, names, actually, let me know. let me dispel some stuff about Albert. Okay. Albert was really not part of the case. Um, they found her on the fourth. There were five police officers who went to the scene. I do want to talk about that a little more after. Um they went back 
uh, on the 6th to retrieve the, um, the video. And that's when Elbert went with the um, Lank in um, McCourt. So he really didn't have anything to do with the case. He just went back with them to basically make sure everything was taken care of at the apartment so they could turn it back over to, to the, um, the building, the, you know, the building, building, the people, the, you know, where her apartment was, they could turn it back over to them. So he, everybody keeps saying, I see a lot of people make that comment that Albert was part of the case. He really, really wasn't, but it's still, he's part of the, he's part of that, that crew. Yep. Um, let's play that video. I'm going to, I'm going to put up the video if I can negotiate that. I don't know if you guys noticed me get up for a second. I had to fix my chair. My chair was like falling apart. Can you play that video full screen? Cause I want to go, uh, turn my light. Down. Yeah, we could definitely do that. It's going right. to take me a second to, uh, yeah, we'll get that up in us. There we go. Hopefully this is it. Uh, one second yeah, here. That's it. And this was the last, you know, the, the, there's a few different video, a uh, few different times of her going in and out of her apartment. This is the last moments of that she was seen alive. Let's see if that works. There we go. We're going to get this going. No, I just wanted to comment on that too. Uh, that's Sandra going in and out to shovel off her her car. It looks like she had plans, like she, you know. She actually, because because it snowed that night into the next day, and that's when the, it was the nor'easter blizzard, whatever you want to say. I think she was bringing her her thing back into the house just in case her you know her door froze. So she would have the scraper with her when she went back out in the morning to clean off her car. I, she probably did clean it off, but I think that's why she brought that the brush in in with her. And this is uh, Farwell coming in the, coming in to see her the night that she died. He's uh, a cop that was well known to be an anti-masker. Yes. And he's what's he wearing? He's wearing a mask. He's wearing and a mask. Look, look at his posture. The way he's looking down, he's aware. He, you know, he's aware there's a camera there, probably. Oh, he knows the cameras because he's been there many times. He helped her move into that apartment. Let's play uh, him. Look at that. He looks like he's all masked up too. Not like a little mask. I mean, he might even be double masked. <laughs> yeah, he's got a, like a heavy duty mask. It looks like. And look how fast he leaves. He like boogies out of there. He looks really quick up at the, the camera and then he like looks it out of there. No looking back. <laughs> and look how much snow is in the background. Yeah. That was before that was, um, you know, cause it snowed that night into the next day. Crazy. We got a lot of comments. A lot of people watching right now too, which is good. And please, guys, if you're if you're not on the Justice play page, please yes, go, go join. Um, or you can follow me on Twitter. Or, or I have a Twitter for Sandra Birchmore. It's at Sandra Birchmore. Uh, at Sandra Birchmore. Um, you know, we need as many people as we can to uh, get you know get the algorithm going, so her you know case gets out there a little more. There you go. You got the Facebook page right there. Justice for Sandra Birchmore. Definitely join that group, people. It's at, f I just checked it. It was at 4,700. So yeah. let's get it up to like over five tonight. Like, and invite your friends. Like if you're in the group and you like what's going on, you can invite your friends, right? To this group. Yep. It's, it's, it's open. As of right now, it's, it's still an open page. So let's all invite each other tonight. Like, you know, let's just start inviting people to this group too. This is important. You have a, um, a big standout coming to this later. I think there's going to be more interest in this because of the globe coverage and the fact the attorney general took it over. Definitely. And, and there's also a civil suit happening, right? Yes, there is. Um, last year, her, her aunt sued 
the town, the police station, um, all four guys, because there is the fourth police officer from from Abington who was a um, a animal control officer for Stoughton before he became a police officer, but he's not on that. He's not part of the that part of the lawsuit was dropped. So we got some new people joining the group right now. Thank you. Awesome. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I post a lot of stuff there. Um, the, you were just mentioning the standout. We have a standout on March 23rd um, at 1 to 4, um, in, basically in the Stoughton Center. Um, I say, I, I put on it, if you if you put, uh, plug in Town Hall, it's right, right across the street from Town Hall. Um, trying to get as many people as we can to do the standout there. We got a pretty good crowd last time. Um, we did one day in Canton at the police station and then we did another day the next day in Stoughton. And then we did a, um, like a basically little memorial for her. Cause it was the year, the, um, the three year anniversary for Sandra's death. Um, you said that was March 23rd. Yes. What day of the week is that? Saturday. Oh, Saturday. So we, I mean, we should try to get a lot of people there for that one to 4 PM. That sounds like, yeah. a part, like that'll be, Fun. You'll get to meet some new people and you get to Definitely. stand up for, for Sandra and her family. Definitely. And if you're somebody who's, you know, I, I have health issues, so I fully, fully understand it. I have a little fold up stool that I'm going to try to bring. Um, but if you if you're somebody who isn't healthy, share share her story. Talk about her story. Um, bring a chair. <laughs> you know, you can come hang out, come hang out for a half hour if you can't come for the, the full time, you know. I said tag tag a friend share one of the stories um i will tonight i will boost some stuff since there's a lot more interest in her page um i will boost some of the stuff that's been previously posted so people can watch that stuff and um i post a lot of like little clips of um screenshots of you know parts of the because uh, the, there's the massachusetts state police report and then there's the the stoughton police report and then there's the canton reports and I recommend if you're going to read any of these reports, start with the Stoughton one, read the Canton ones, and then go on to the, the Massachusetts State Police one. They're very heavily redacted, except the Canton ones. Now, with this new news about the Attorney General taking over, have you heard from the family? Like, have they said anything about that? Are they like, you know, or have you heard that they're happy about that or any any type of comment from the family about the latest news i am not in contact with her aunt because i'm respecting what her lawyer has told her she's not supposed to have contact with anybody especially press um and i do talk to a few family members um they're they're glad this has been moved to the ag they're happy that finally somebody is looking into sandra's case you know, yeah. what happened to her, whether you, whether you believe, you know, there's technically two cases and then like within the abuse, there's like almost three cases break four technically if you include heel, you know, th there's her death portion of the case. And then there's, you know, the abuse, the, the abuse. The sexual abuse as a child, the grooming. Yeah, so, and... so it's like, th there's, there's a lot for them to look into and, I spoken to um, Fanning, Trooper Fanning, um, back in October about her case, and I spoke to him for like forty minutes. You know, I I got him to admit her phone did not move after Farwell left. They say that she did it right when he left, and I Sandra was an oversharer. When you read the Massachusetts State Report, she made some of her coworkers feel uncomfortable because she was just that type of person who overshared. And she, it just kind of makes no sense that she wouldn't have reached out to somebody, especially since she was texting with her cousin at 8.50. And then she was Snapchatting with a coworker and the last Snapchat was around nine. And he showed up 14 minutes later you would think that she would have reached out to one of them since she was in conversation with them and said, 
he just broke up with me or he says it's over and he, he wants me to get rid of the baby and I don't want to, you know, I would have thought that Sandra, you know, would have reached out to somebody. Now I do have to put a caveat in there. You know, Sandra did have some mental health issues. Um, and you know, she was groomed and when you're groomed, you, that come, that puts a lot on you. And just imagine this guy who's been in her life since she was 13, you know, in her, she, she loved him. She wanted to be with him. She wanted her, his wife to leave, you know, to, to leave his family because so, she thought that they were going to be together. So just imagine how she would have felt regardless of whether you thought she killed herself or she was murdered. She would have been devastated if, if, they were getting into a fight and he was saying all this to her. And I, I want to say that, you know what? Sometimes people do kill themselves. I personally don't believe that Sandra killed herself. I tried to kill myself when I was 13. So I do understand the complexities that sometimes people can go from zero to a hundred. And I literally woke up that day and I was like, well, going to kill myself today. Like, I was supposed to go to school and I decided to swallow a bunch of pills. Yes, that happens. But why you got to ask the question, why was Matthew Farwell at Sandra's house? He didn't need to call her. I mean, he, he could have called her. He could have texted her. He could have emailed her. He could have FaceTimed her to break up with her. Why was he at her apartment that night? He didn't want me to physically be there to end their relationship. Why was he there? Yeah. Why was he wearing a mask? That that keeps getting me. Like, you know, knowing he's anti-mask. Mm -hmm. I mean, and why did he walk in with his head down, with his hood up? Yeah. You know, all suspicious. Because he was trying to hide his identity. I'm having yeah. chair problems tonight. This is bizarro. <laughs> My chair's falling apart. I think it's time to get a new one then. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's... I'm having lighting problems, so. Yeah, well. It's you never know what might fall apart. Usually it's my technical stuff. Now it's actually physical stuff in the hey, studio. This is the first time I'm I probably shouldn't say it out loud because it'll probably crash now. This is the first time I'm actually been able to do a stream yard. Because awesome. every time, like I, I on my computer, the other times it my phone, it, I, I had to switch to phone. Um it, it it's been a disaster every time I've done stream yard. So that's a victory for me. Our stars are all aligned now. Like did yes. we, 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 we try to schedule this like four times. It was funny. Like, yeah. And so many no things are crisis is happening back and forth with both of us. So yeah, it's perfect that we got to do it tonight. Uh, yeah. We have questions. This is a question that came in. Mm -hmm. um, they were asking about the DNA of the baby. Has any DNA come back on the baby? Well, Farwell just, just refused to take a DNA, give them DNA. So none. I mean, that would some, be so, something that would, yeah. Think about that. A suspect who was the last person to see Sandra alive refused to give DNA. If it was me or you, what would they have done? Got a warrant for his DNA. A judge, they could have shown that video to any judge in the state of Massachusetts, and the judge would have would have signed that the, the warrant before he even got to the elevator. Uh, Why didn't they get his DNA? Yeah. It's, it seems like uh, a lot of suspicions on this guy. It's pretty obvious to me. Uh, Lauren uh, posted, she said, Mike, at least it isn't the phone. It ain't the phone. It's usually my issue is the, taking the phone calls. My phone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that a couple times. Yeah. I mean, and people think I like. It's my fault. No, I think it's a system fault. I don't know what why Bluetooth doesn't always work on there. And I tried a wire, like a connected wire, and that didn't work at all. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's me. I think I'm I think I'm pretty good like running a show. Like I don't even have any moderators. I'm probably gonna add them. But yeah, it's constant, the phone issue. <laughs> but um I any questions people i know you're in the chat people have been asking questions i probably missed some if you have any questions from mizzy this is the perfect time to do so here's one can't they compel dna they could have they definitely could have and my question is was there 
they say there was no nothing on the you know there was no disturbance in the room um it didn't look like there was an altercation my question is was there skin under her nails and i want to know how was her body found was sandra nude was she clothed because a lot of women when they commit suicide they are clothed they're not nude it's it even though you're um you're ending your life it's a modesty thing they don't want them to see them naked so that's those are questions i have but yeah they could have compelled them to get dna like i said earlier a judge would have signed off on that before he even got if he saw that video before he even got to the elevator uh, another question uh mizzy were any photos taken by police to document the unintended death yes and we seen those or are those still like hidden away can't get them can't get them okay yeah and i i signed i tried to get the the um the autopsy report but in the state of massachusetts you can't get it now the kirk minahane uh podcast it was great it was kind of short people have commented even their fans are a little upset because it almost didn't go anywhere like some of the other ones um but that's well, not their fault no, there's no other information that's it yeah they did everything they could um yep. do you expect him to finish that by chance like do you think he'll go back to it or is he kind of done with it like if I love, to, I love them too. Um, his producer, Dave, I can't Dave remember Cullinane. his last name. I know it's yes. Yeah. He like is he's on, on the page. He, he, uh, he still really fights for Sandra. So with this new update, I mean, they did say at the end, you know, if there are updates, maybe we'll do it, you know, we'll add a, an episode to update, but there was no, there was nothing. The only, the only thing that, came about was and they mentioned that was the lawsuit and there they, they really wasn't much going in the lawsuit which so kind lawsuit. of silences people i mean i ran into that with lorna mcmurray too um we did something on the cannabis worker and her mm -hmm. mom can't talk to us really anymore because it's the lawsuit time now so it's, yes. it's it can get tough waiting but you know it'd be great to see if they do follow-ups when that lawsuit gets settled maybe or they go to trial or the attorney general bust some people i mean this is yeah. uh it's exciting to see that something happened with the attorney general we don't know why but it, it's exciting to see that and uh that you're still doing these standouts Definitely. Uh, what what kind of signs do people bring to these standouts are there just justice um, for sandra what, what do you see for sandra birchmore um some people you know some people can make um printouts of like uh there was there's a girl who who she's able to make them at her work she actually makes a bunch of them so people have if you don't have a sign don't worry come down um i ha i had because i i don't live in massachusetts i live in new hampshire so i have to take the bus down because i don't drive anymore um i got a, basically a screen print sign that that has basically that photo there and it says justice for sandra birchmore and it has um a, a barcode to scan to go it takes you to the the petition um you know you could say police corruption you could say you know three don't police officers you know molested her you know groomed her anything like that you know even if you don't have a sign just come down you know having the body having another body there helps it shows them that you know what people are watching in this case needs to be fully fully investigated because sandra never got a full investigation awesome saturday march 23rd people can go down there stoughton right outside stoughton town hall yep 1 to 4 p.m definitely show up if you can um i was just gonna mention that yeah we got another slide what, what this is also these the slides, uh, you know, that look like this right now that are on the screen, there's two of them. We we posted one earlier. This one comes from the Boston Globe story, right? Yes. What are we looking at right now? Um, well, I have long like th these are out, these are um my what I think was going on. Um it kind of looks like that William Farrow was trafficking Sandra. Mm. 
Um, there's some weird occurrences that went along with this, this slide. He was having her send videos and photos of when she was having sex with other men. And supposedly a Stoughton police officer was depicted with his male genit male genitalia. I cannot say. Basically, genitalia. Genitalia. And it, it says, what is, what is it? Uh, depicted genitalia. Unnamed Stoughton police officer. Now, was that, it what clearly wasn't William Farwell. So was it his brother or Robert Devine? Because if it wasn't one of those two, we have a bigger issue, which I, I have been wondering for a long time, who else? Because they were quick to take up this case and investigate these three. Who else? Because there was the, the animal control officer who William introduced her to there was a, a um, military recruiter who was tied up in it, but we, I don't have a name for this person. So who else was William Farwell hooking Sandra up with to take photos and videos of their sexual encounters? That's trafficking. Underage too, which is if if she was at that point, that was yeah. I don't know if if she was underage, but actually that says on August sixteenth, twenty twenty, this happened. So it, it, I don't know if any of this occurred when she was underage, but that one occurred in twenty twenty. Yeah, that's sick shit. And I, I don't um, I don't know why these dudes need videos too. Like you just I don't know. I've never tried. I don't know. If he's I never wanted any recordings of any of that stuff. Like yeah. I just don't. I don't get it. I I never got the dick pictures too. The women tell me all the time they get the dick pics from guys. Like I can't imagine sticking a camera and taking a picture of my thing. It's just <laughs> such a f and then sending it. To, like I'd be so embarrassed that someone would like find that in my phone number. Ryan, send it to someone voluntarily. Uh, I don't know. A lot of messed up men out there. I just don't get it. Um, we got a good question. Micro dots asked, where are they now? Where are these police now and the animal control officer? Where are they all? Some I'll them... answer that question in a minute. So okay. just before we go on. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. You were on William this Farwell <laughs> looked himself up in the CJIS system 24 times. They're not supposed to use that system unless it's for a case. He was looking himself up? He was looking himself up. 24 times and he was also monitoring sandra he looked her up why was he, he if she that? was talking to see if she was talking that's probably it right i mean i imagine. because i believe he was trafficking her wow. but by this paragraph that looks like he's trafficking her he's pimping her out to other men to get videos and photos definitely i mean even if it wasn't uh from money like favors or anything like that just, yeah you no know, that's it's the same thing, especially federally. I mean, if they were crossing state lines, which I wouldn't doubt, do you think they went to Rhode Island and did, did that? Possibly, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't. I don't know. But mm. it, why? Wh why hasn't he been looked into for that? And they have. No. They have this. This came from the Massachusetts State Police's investigation. So why didn't they do anything with that? To go back to the other question, um, yeah, where are yes, they now? I agree with what um, Lauren just said. Possibly black blackmail, extortion too. Yes, possibly. Um, the videos and pictures could have been a way of showing customers, "Hey, you want this? Is what this? This is so disgusting. I can't believe I'm even saying this. This is what I got for you." Mm. Um, now to go back to that question that micro dots said um robert devine is a practicing attorney in massachusetts i don't know how much he practices but he's an attorney in massachusetts he still has his law license think about that what what do you have to do to lose your law license and from the mass bar like that's it's insane and um william farwell is out in new mexico he lives right outside um albuquerque and matthew farwell lives in i believe easton 
Doesn't one of them work for the TSA or something like that? William did work um, for the TSA till they found out about what was going on with this case. Hmm. They fired him after they found out, got wind of him being involved in this. So what do you think is going to happen next, Busy? Um, I'm hoping that the attorney general brings some charges, you know, Matthew Farwell should be in jail for statutory rape. But they keep saying that it's hard to bring charges because they don't have her as a witness. Yeah, convenient. Exactly. Maybe that was another, I mean, you know, speculate about the baby being a reason, but maybe it was also the other crimes. Like you're, you don't have a witness. It's the, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> If she can't talk about what's what had happened to her, you know, it's 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 a it's a reason to get rid of somebody. It's how gangs work. Yep. Um, I also I'm hoping with the lawsuit that once they get to the depositions, because the three of them have to sit down and take a deposition, they have to answer questions under oath. You know, oh. and, you know, Sanders lawyers have the full report. They don't have the redacted report. They, they can get the full report. So it's like they, they have a lot of questions that they're going to have to answer for. I wish they had deposed them already. Like, what are we waiting for? Right. Well, it's snaking its way through the, the, the court. They're still trying to get it dismissed. And the judge dismissed like one one of the the. um the charges, um, but, and they totally dismissed heel. Um, but they, they, they that was, that both. was a dog officer, right? Yes. I think it's, why because, did they dismiss that? She was too old or what? Too old. I think it's just because, um, from what I got from the reading that there was oral sex traded for oh, a dog. Cat or cats. Yeah. A cat actually. Yeah. So I think that, it was, you know, they thought it was a lesser charge you know, type deal thing. And they, they didn't feel like he fit in with the other three officers. Who were the real predators? Yeah, I mm -hmm. could see the levels of uh, awfulness. <laughs> Definitely. <clears throat> um, I do want to say if there's anybody watching that has any information on Sandra's case, if you knew Sandra um, or, you know, you have a friend that knew Sandra, or if you were in the Explorers program yourself, please reach out to me. You know, I've had a lot of people come to me and tell me different things. You know, I spoke to the um, young woman that the case podcast spoke to who was groomed by um, Divine. And she said something very interesting. She said Divine groomed the Farwells too, but he didn't groom them to be predators. Um, he groomed them to be predators. Yeah. That's why, I mean, that, that it's like a system. You see that yeah. a lot. Um, yes, I, right as you were mentioning that, you're right with our audience because one of the mem you know people watching said, I wonder if there are other girls this has happened to. And it's not only girls. It's kind of like the guys that the men were groomed in a way too to be predators. Definitely. But, uh, do you and think there that there are a lot of other women that this happened to? Um, I know of an assault that took place after all this happened um and there are there are other people who, there was a girl who posted on the justice page who was friends with sandra and she said that she knew of three other people so i messaged her and i said hey what's going on and she, that's all she would say um she said it was their story to tell if they wanted to tell and she said she promised sandra that she would never tell what ha was going on with these three men, excuse me. And she wanted to keep her promise, even though Sandra passed away. And I mm. did my best to try to convince her. I said, the best way to honor Sandra would be to tell, yeah. tell what you know. Yeah, you got to um, tell. She's like, well, it's not my story to tell. And like I said, I did my best to try to convince her, but it's scary for people to come forward. Yeah. They're dealing with the police. Yeah. It's not like it's some Schmo Joe Schmo off the streets. They're dealing with police officers, and granted, they're not police officers anymore. 
but they have they have friends you never know and yeah clearly they have friends if they've never been charged question came in uh mizzy have you spoken to chief mcnamara we featured chief mcnamara at the very i beginning. have not but i i have spoken to the deputy deputy chief because he's the one who did the report we didn't go in depth but i do want to see if i could sit down with him i'd rather kind of do it face to face and see if i can have a conversation which kind of goes along with this um when we did our last standout i spoke to a, a stoughton police officer and he said that nobody knew he he didn't know what was going on he didn't know what that you know what was going on with them and um he was kind of mad because you know they did do the internal review and they turned it over to the state police and he's like it was up to them to charge them and i got to the nitty-gritty i flat out said do you think he murdered her he didn't say no he said i don't know that's big if a fellow police officer can't say no he didn't murder her he said i don't know now when you're doing the standouts what uh have you have any cops police ever spoken to you about it and what about the average citizen in stoughton there like what's their response when you're doing your standouts um well it's it's where we did our standout we because we've done um three we did one at canton well they we've technically done four i wasn't able to do go to the fourth one because i was really i think i had covid i was really sick um they we did a standout in front of morrissey's office um and then we all filled out letters to and we brought them upstairs to his office and they actually some some of the can free can read people will kind of get a chuckle out of this um it was the week that Morrissey made that video hmm. and they told us that he was on vacation. We, it was Monday. He, the video got released on Friday, I believe. Um, but they told us we couldn't speak to him because he was on vacation. I was like, that's kind of weird that he wasn't there to talk to us, but he was there to make a video. Hmm. Um, but that's how I got in touch with, with Fanning. They, I called and said, hey, I've been trying. I want to talk to you guys. I want to know where Sandra's case is. And they um, they had Fanning call me. So I got to ask him a lot of questions about the case. So, uh, Oh, sorry. There were some other comments that came in questions. Uh, I want to look at this one. Uh, what did Sean on the golf say about this case? I think Sean believes there's something to it. Have you talked to Sean on the golf about this? Yeah. Um, um, I, I did speak to Sean a while back and I said, Hey, Sean, you know, I know you're working on the Karen Reed case right now, but you know, I would love for your, your input on Sandra's case. And I would love for, you know, you know, you to jump on this case. And he said, once Karen's case is over, he's like, that's definitely a case that we've talked about looking into. So, um, I am going to hit him up again because since he has his show. Yeah, he has a show now. And he, he told me last night that he's got another case that he's working on, which I don't know. Maybe it's Sandra. Who knows? Sean is mysterious and gets shit done. That's what I can say about Sean. So definitely be good to see what he can do on that, too. Um, there were some other questions I saw. Throw up your questions again. If I've missed your questions, I want to make sure. Have you seen any questions that you want to answer that I missed, Mizzy, in the chat? Um, I, I've only seen some that you've put up on the thing because I'm not really looking at the chat. Yes. Um, there's a couple of things that I do want to touch upon. Yes. Um, for people to fully understand how weird her death investigation was. So there were five Canton police officers who showed up to the scene of Sanders' house. Um, the first police officer, there was three police officers that showed up first. Um, the first officer to see Sandra was Officer Ensley Cotard. I might be pronouncing that wrong. And he said she was hung by a belt or a lanyard or a string or a rope. What? Yeah. The second yeah. officer was Officer Yeaton, and he said she was hung by a scarf. Okay, that's weird um officer uh hold on officer brady i didn't have a report for so i don't know what he said 
And then Officer Jonathan McCourt said she was hung by a dark covered colored strap. Then comes Sergeant Lank, who's to me the weirdest one of all. Sergeant Lank didn't describe what he saw. He described what Ensley's um, Cotard saw. Now you remember that Cotard said he, she was found with a belt or a lanyard or a rope or a string. He said that, Link said that Cotard said she was hung with a black strap. Now that's five. Five different doctors, answers. Right? Five grown men who can't tell us what she hung herself with. You, you mean to tell me they can't tell the difference between a scarf or a lanyard or some string or rope or a strap? Now, I understand that a strap, I know there's belts that kind of look like a strap, so I could see, you know, misconstruing those. But five officers can't tell us what she hung, us, her, hung herself with? That's very suspicious. And when you see things like that in a report, that means there's something wrong. Clearly. Uh, we had another question about divide and another woman. I'm trying to find it again. I, I lose them. We have so many comments come in. Have you heard about divine with another, another woman? I'm trying yes, to find her was, um, what, what, uh, Tiff, Tiffany Overstreet, something like that. Yes. What's that about? Um, hold on a second. Um, when he was deputy chief, he was having an affair with Tiffany and their relationship went sour and him and his wife got, got, got in the scheme of basically going after her and they got a search warrant and went to her house to get her devices because I, I think he wanted, he didn't want anybody to see the stuff that Tiffany had. He ruined her life. He made it look like it was her, but it was him. Hmm. And that's why he was demoted from deputy chief to a patrolman again because of this. He should have been let go. That's police corruption at its finest. Horrible. He should have been let go then. And Throwing did, this woman's life. Did she do anything back? Like, did she get a lawyer or anything? Or did she um, run away? What did she, did she do? She... she kind of keeps out of sight. She doesn't want any, you know, she doesn't really want her name out there. She just wants to, you know, she's trying to get her life back after her life being ruined by these men or this man, I should say. Mm. What did, what did um, Olivia say? I, I, oh, Olivia was talking about the police reports. Not uh, really a question, but she was noting that they should be precise and specific, you know, five exactly. different police reports. So exactly and it, it's crazy that there's only technically you know five reports there's the stoughton internal there's the massachusetts state police one and then there's the canton the, the each each of the Canton cops filled out one like i said i don't have brady's i don't know if he filled out one another question said uh, how many months pregnant was sandra when she she was about three Three months okay and you guys got to understand that sandra was so excited about this baby she she was buying stuff she was you know she had just gotten a car seat sent to her she was telling anybody that would listen that she was having a baby she was calling old friends that she hadn't talked to in years to tell them that she was having a baby she would tell anybody in the world that she wanted this baby. So it makes no sense that she would do this. And she told co co-workers that she thought the relationship with the father wasn't going that well. So she was ready to raise the kid by herself. But the problem is she wanted him to sign the birth certificate and she wanted money from him. That was a problem. And it's, it's fishy that it would happen that night because his wife was in the hospital getting ready to have their child. I wonder if she said, 
go take care of it. I'm not saying to murder her. I'm not saying I'm not throwing that out there. I'm just saying if she said, I'm having a child right now, you need to go take care of this chick because I want her out of our life. Meaning you need to convince her to have an abortion or whatever, right. whatever way of getting her out of our lives. I don't, like I said, I'm not putting that out there that she, you know, I'm not trying to insinuate that, but it would make sense that she would have said, I'm having a baby tomorrow. Cause she was having a, she was having a C-section the next day. I think she was in the hospital that night because of the major snowstorm. So that makes it even weirder that he's at her house. You know? Very, yeah. Very strange. Uh, Olivia is asking, is there any digital evidence like her cell phone, forensic digital data available in any of the reports? Um, no, not in the, not in the reports. It's all redacted, but, um, our old buddy Garino is the one who did the extraction from Matthew Farwell's phone. And he claims that there was no data there. Luckily, they were able to get all the text messages from Sandra's devices. So it wasn't lost. Um, but there's no, there's no reports on it. Uh, some of it's starting to seep up. That's why um, Boston Globe was able to put that stuff out there because they were in court and the court, the, um, they're not listing the court date on the, um, the page. So I didn't even know that there was another court date. Cause I checked that periodically. I check it like usually at least once a week. And there was no, there was no date for the next court date. So I'm going to have to start calling the court to see when the next dates are. But yeah, there's no, there's, there's, they. Like a black hole. Went to yeah. the AG's office. We don't know anything. Yeah. So weird. Um, they had we also a lot of information from, they got her uh, therapist turned over the reports like of, of what she was saying in therapy, but she didn't even tell her therapist about them. Now we so, got a com comment uh, disputing the part that you talked about the uh, per you know, the woman that was, had the divine harasser. I okay. uh, says, if you Google it, he is the victim. New pics were sent out. Disgusting story. Is there another side to that? Have you heard anything about that? Well, there, he was demoted for a reason because he went, he, he, he went and, I mean, I have the report. I can post it on, 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 um, her page. I love but it. I think that's a was, good idea. Post it. Cause I, was, uh, yeah. When the people come he back, went, with he, yes, he yeah. got, he went after her. I mean, great that she could have been doing stuff too, but he went after her illegally. Like he should have been fired for it. Now there's another uh, comment I've been seeing a lot too about, and I've heard this too, and I'm, I wonder if the what you know about it. Um, they're saying that maybe even uh, Detective Lank or even some of the other Canton Police Department employees behind the scenes have had doubts whether she actually had suicide, yes. and they was, they kind of lead to murder, but you know they're. You know, what do you do when it's been called a suicide and you're a Canton police officer and you have doubts? Have you heard that? Or do you have any yes, proof of that? That was one of the things I wanted to tell you about. Um, I had a source come to me telling me that three of the five Canton police officers um, don't agree with the Massachusetts State Police's findings on Cassandra's case. And they feel like that she was they were strong armed to say that it was suicide. Um, they reported this to their supervisor and supposedly there is an email that was sent from the supervisor to the Massachusetts State Police. I foiled Canton and, and the DA's office, the Massachusetts State Police, because it's the same thing. Um, and this, they say this, this email does not exist. And yeah. it was, it was a police officer that told my source and Dave McGrath also had a source come to him saying the same thing. And I also had another source tell me that they knew about it also. So I'm leaning towards it's probably true. And two of the three 
two of the five Canton police officers are no longer there. I believe Yeaton retired and, and um, McCourt no longer works for Canton. I don't know, know where he works now. Who were the state police uh, running it, running this investigation? Was it was it Tully? Was it Proctor? Was it no, Aaron they weren't no? on, on his case. It was Fanning, Dunn, um, I think a guy named Clark, and Tufts. Are they going to be changed because the attorney general took over, or is it going to be the same state police running that investigation? No, the attorney general will have her people look into it. Good. The attorney general's office usually has her own investigators. So, uh, here's the one about Sandra. They want to know if Sandra had picked a name for the child. Uh, did she know if it was a boy or a girl? I don't have that information. <clears throat> just uh, reading some of the comments. A lot. A lot of people listening tonight. We're, we're, we're just like two away from, oh, we just hit it. Do you, do you see the number? Do you see the number of the watching? No? No, I can't see the number. We just broke a 1,000 listening nice. live right now, which Yay. is all. I always look at the 1,000 number as being like, yes. Like, yeah. We, <laughs> like, it's just a good number. <clears throat> Let me look at my phone and see if there's anything else I really wanted to talk about. Um, we do have more questions coming in, too. While you're thinking about it. Anyone who's watching, this is your opportunity right now. You want to ask a question, post it. Post a question. Definitely. Julio said out of the Norfolk's uh, DA's office. It was. It was in the Norfolk DA's office. But now yes. the attorney general has taken over. We have no idea why. These people yep. just do these things. They don't even tell us why. And it's the same. I mean, it's the same unit that Tully and Proctor are all from. It's just, I mean, Fanning was at Turtle Boy's arrest. It's the same unit. It's the, uh, the, the yeah, the, it's the same troopers that are underneath Morsey. It's just, it was different troopers, but it's the same unit. Clearly, there's a problem with this unit and Morsey. I mean, you know, what do they say? The fish rots from the head. There's got to be a reason they took the case away from Morrissey. I mean, exactly. Why don't we know it? Because they probably didn't want it out that they they yeah. took the case. You know, like I said, I I I I wonder if it was the FBI turning over the case to to the DA or the AG. I mean, um, another a, question. A better so investigation. That you know, they. They will look at what what the, the the state police did on the case, and then they will see if they come up with something different. Which is good. Yeah. That's what we want. We want a second set of eyes, not connected, to, to take a look at this. Yeah, I, I just said that Garino did do the um, the forensics, and he said that it's just like just like uh, how he said Jen McCabe's phone. He he said there was nothing there. Cause he deleted everything, but clearly he does not know how to, you know, do digital forensics and he should be, <laughs> he should not be their expert expert. Maybe he'd be an assistant <laughs> <laughs> stuff from the bottom. Yeah. Um, we got another question. It's kind of been addressed, but we can address it again, I guess. So a little more full. Uh, Gina is asking about, did Sandra have family? What have they said? Sandra does have some family. Um, unfortunately, in 2016, when Sandra was still a teenager, her mother died. And then that same year, her grandmother died. And then in 2019, her aunt died. And her, her other aunt is still alive. She does have cousins and other family. But unfortunately, a lot of her family um, didn't agree with her dating a, dating a married police officer because they didn't know. Nobody knew what was going on with Sandra. Nobody knew that she was, you know, she was groomed and they, you know, he started statutory raping her at 15. So she kind of lost a lot of her family because of it. They didn't agree with her actions. Mm -hmm. But I do talk to a couple family members and um, the ones that I've spoken to really want 
her case out there and they've they've all said that you know thanked me for what i'm what i'm doing talking about sandra's case but unfortunately they've been told not to speak out because of the lawsuit which is smart i mean you do what your attorney tells you to do and uh there's a reason why the attorney told them that um kg says did they have the same medical examiner as the o'keefe case no it was a different medical examiner i have not looked into her credentials um i'm gonna have my friend sarah she was the one who i was talking about earlier her son was murdered in norfolk um not norfolk um in Ad um in in north carolina he was a navy officer um retired he was a veteran and he was brutally beaten and left for dead and similar to a lot of these cases his his case was covered up by the police and they're saying that he did that to himself and it's a crazy story i recommend checking into his name is brandon embry i, I recommend checking into him but because she was researching her son's death she's looked into medical examiners a lot and um you'd be surprised at a lot of medical examiners don't have as, as much schooling as you would think um they don't always know what they're doing there's a lot of corruption with medical examiners you'd be surprised if you googled it and a lot of medical examiners will believe what the police tell them medical examiners are, are supposed to speak for the dead they should go into their invest portion of the investigation blind you know they shouldn't like with with sandra's case they should have said they could you know they obviously knew she was found hanging but they should have looked at it blindly with john o'keefe's they should have looked at it blindly not listening to what the police are telling her they should never go off of what singly what the police are telling her because they re they like say with John O'Keefe, they basically back engineered his thing to say, oh, he was hit by a car. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh corruption too around out of the things related. Like medical examiner is one thing, but there's been the drug testing with Annie Dukin, the lab analysts. They were they had the same conflict of interest where they were just trying to clear cases for police officers exactly and they were fudging the results they weren't even doing the test they were just convicting people that didn't even have drugs in some cases probably on them um a, and then then there's also yeah there's been other things too like the blood alcohol uh yes scandal. the breathalyzers they fix those they didn't do what they're supposed to do was uh i forget what you call it calibrate them and th they've fudged so much stuff in law enforcement and done fraud so yeah. it would not be surprising to have a medical examiner just kind of doing whatever the cops want them to say yeah. and just signing off on it and having the cops basically write up the results. Yeah. It, and it happens a lot more than people realize. I recommend people to just Google medical examiner, medical examiner corruption. There's a lot more than you think there is. And I want to say it's like, I know there's a lot of people who have like come on to the Karen Reed case and they didn't realize how much police corruption there is, but this happens, stuff happens all the time. You know, it, there's so many people who are in prison that are innocent. There are so many times where the police just half asked things and I'm not even talking about like on the level of like what with, you know, Karen Reed, but there's so many times that the police cover up crimes and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm the middle of the road type of person. I don't believe all cops are bad. I'm not a cab, yeah. yeah. but there is definite flaws in the system Big and it, there is so much that needs to be fixed overall there, there's take this man on the screen right there standing with sandra this man never should have been able to come that close to becoming the chief of police he should have never been the deputy chief of police this man had girls in his 
patrol car all the time, in his personal call up car all the time. There were teenage girls in his office all the time. People saw stuff. People knew stuff was going on. Matter of fact, the, the young woman that um, she was interviewed on the case, she, she was telling me that she went there one time and she was wearing like a low cut top. Now, this girl was like about the same age as, as Sandra, 12 or 13. And she was around wearing like a low cut top. And one of the other officers yelled at her because she was in, in Divine's office and told her to get out, to leave. So there are officers that saw stuff that they probably thought was a little funky. They might not have known to the extent but people knew that he was doing stuff that he shouldn't have been doing. Like, I get that he had the Explorers program, but why is he, why is he driving around with teenagers all the time? Creepy. Wicked creepy. Uh, uh, yeah. John just asked a question. Did Sandra have any other school friends in the era that she may have confided in? I know the police wouldn't have wanted to get more info that could have put the light on them. What do you think? Like I said, there's the girl that I spoke to. She, she knew what was going on with them and Sandra. She knew that they were grooming Sandra and she did not want, Sandra begged her not to say anything because she didn't want to get them in trouble. You got to understand she was groomed. So that's what, that's what groomers do. They, they make you, they make you real think that, you can't tell anybody. If you tell somebody, we're going to go after your family. Your your mother is going to be upset. She's going to hate you. Things like that. And they were they were building up her ego, making her feel good, making her, you know, making her feel. And I don't mean totally wanted in a sexual way, but they were giving her attention, whether it was sexual based attention or just attention. And Sandra didn't have that in her life. She didn't know her father. She what I've been told about Sandra is that she was very smart. Um, she was a little socially awkward and she was very, very immature in a lot of ways, but she was also very mature in a lot of ways because she, there was a lot put on her because her mother was very sickly and they preyed upon it. So there are other people that might know stuff. Um, I know somebody who was, I think was in her class, but they left the Explorers program because the boys were abused too. The boys were treated like shit. And then the girls were treated like little princesses. They were flirting with the girls, grooming the girls. So it was like, there was, he left after, you know, two weeks because he couldn't handle the abuse that they were getting there. So there are other people, I, I can guarantee there are other people who know what, what was going on. I'm not saying about the actual physical abuse, but they knew something was going on with Sandra. They knew that she was getting a lot of attention. Time for people to come forward. I, I would, uh, anybody who's listening that knows anything, got to come forward talk to the attorney general come on this show spill everything like seriously if you don't feel like you can go to the police about it you can come to me because i can i i don't mind calling the attorney general i don't i have no problems with it i'll turn it over i'll get it to the people that need me i will make sure it gets to the right people and then they can come talk to you if you're afraid if you're i, I will go with you if you need me to I just want Sandra to get some justice because I think of it like this, and I'm actually making a video about this. Sandra's an iceberg. We only know what's on the surface. What's underneath the surface? Because we didn't know about the photos and about her filming and taking photos of her having sex and sending it to William Farwell. What else is underneath the surface? How many other officers knew something was going on? Whether it be they knew that she was having sex with all them or there was just something funky going on. Who else knew? Yeah. Who, were any did any Canton officers know something was going on? Because if he was passing her around, the Canton and, and Stoughton police officers 
go to the Stoughton uh, uh, courts. They they talk. Divine and 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 uh, Wank grad graduated together. Divine is from Canton. Right. So who else knew? If they if if you read the, I recommend everybody go read that Boston Globe article because you your jaw will be on the floor. It, they said she was being passed around like a toy. Her lawyer in court, I guess, said that that at the, at the last hearing, she was being passed around like a toy. She was being passed around to who? That's a good question. Those are questions I want. I want answered. Sandra deserves those those questions to be answered. People people have said made comments. Oh well, she was an adult by the time you know with some of the stuff that you know. Why did she keep having them in her life? Um, why did she keep talking to these men? You got to understand, she was groomed. She was groomed by them. She she felt, especially with Matthew Fartwell, she was dependent on him. He helped her move into that apartment in Canton. She loved him. It was a twisted love. But she, think of it. She, this is the only guy. I mean, she might have dated other people. I don't really, I don't really know. But even if she didn't, he was the constant man in her life since she was 13. Crazy. When you are groomed, you see things in a different way. They twist things in your mind and you don't see the bigger picture. She thought that this man loved her. She thought this man was going to leave his family for her. And it's sad. It's sad that her life came to the end, came to an end. And the system failed her again when Morrissey had this case. And I'm, I'm glad that the AG is looking into this case. And hopefully that system will finally do what's right for Sandra. Whether I just, yeah, I just hope the that they put out a statement, too. Like, I'm, I'm just frustrated the attorney general and the yeah. district attorney. Neither of them explained why this got taken over by the AG. You think, I mean, they don't have to tell us everything, but tell us something. Like, yeah, there's got to be some transparency around why the attorney general took over this case. I, I agree. I I totally agree. Um, but they might have been trying to do it, you know, undercover to see what they could get. Get. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know. And that's the point. Uh, big old, big old dog on YouTube just made the point. Don't assume this AG is legit. I mean, I think she is. I like Andrea Campbell, but you got a point. Like, and especially not saying anything. Yeah. Like, come on, Andrea Campbell. You prove to us we we're not just going to assume that you're going to be legit on this. We we want to see something that looks legit. And that's why I need everybody in, who's watching this. We need your help to put pressure on them. There's a momentum. I feel like it's we're making a snowball. We're rolling faster and faster down the hill now. You know, like think like I said, my if I I only had a few people following following the um Sandra Birchmore um uh, Twitter handle. And it's like I have people liking and sharing and and tagging me and it's like it's gone like since this article came out it's been like i've lived with my phone in my hand is that great like, i can't even i don't even want to see how many hours it says i've been on the phone because it's probably going to say 24 hours a day that that i'm staying on my phone because i'm just replying to people people have been messaging me asking questions and i love that i want i will talk to anybody about this case because i would rather the correct information get out there then you know like i said like the thing with kevin albert people have been saying a lot that kevin albert was part of it he really wasn't i mean he went on the last day to help them get the to basically turn the apartment over he wasn't one of the officers that responded to her and i just want to remind everyone uh 
because we have a lot of new viewers now. We're up over 1,150 now, which is oh, amazing. Good. We've been growing the whole show. We started out like 300, 400, 500, then good. just kept going up seven, eight, a thousand. Now we're 1,100. So this is a thank lot you of people. Who's watching. Yeah, thank you for listening. But you got to do more than that. We got yeah. there's a Facebook group, Justice for Sandra Birchmore. You need to join it if you haven't joined. If you've already joined it, invite all your friends. You know, you know the ones that would care about this case and help out. Invite them to this group. Let's get it up. Like I said, when I took the snapshot earlier today, it was at four thousand seven hundred. Let's get it five, six, seven thousand tonight. Like this weekend. Oh, Let's just keep inviting people to it. Let's get this big. That's how it gets noticed. And the other thing, they got to stand out. March 23rd, it's a Saturday afternoon, 1 to 4 p.m. outside the Stoughton Town Hall. Yeah. Show up for that, too. Definitely. People, Cena was forgotten for so long. Her case was basically thrown, you know, thrown away. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of coverage of her case. And it's insane. Three police officers groomed. And one of them statutory raped a young woman and the other ones were having sex with her in their, their cars on duty and, and all this crazy stuff. And the amount of coverage on this case has been next to zero. So word of mouth, people pushing it, people sharing, you know, I make a lot of TikTok videos and then I post them on the, the justice page. And then now I'm starting to post stuff on Twitter, share it, like it comment it helps get it out there more um and i've met some amazing people you know who have been helping me to get more stuff out there and i appreciate everybody who's you know who's helped i just want her to get the justice that she deserves and and if nothing comes of it at least more people knew about sandra's story and that there was something wrong and maybe more people speaking up will put pressure on the AG to charge someone. One thing that Fanning did tell me was because there's a, there's because of what happened with the church years ago, um, the statutory rape, and it seems like that's what they were kind of going to char looking to try to charge. That even if there's a um, a limit of how many years they can have it because of what happened with the church there are laws that they can skirt around it to charge him so again if anybody has any information you can reach out out to mike and he can get it to me or you can go on the justice page i post under um Busy. my mixed girl in a mixed up world uh heading you'll see me i post almost everything that's posted there you know reach out to me if you have any information on her case please 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 get it to me even if you want to stay anonymous please get it to me I, I i protect my sources i might tell say what they told me but i don't tell what who, who the person is i always ask can i can i share that before i i say what somebody has told me so i protect my sources and a comment uh, came up, said, why would the AG say anything if it's an open case? I, I mean, my response to that is the AG, the attorney general, is an elected official. The mm -hmm. district attorney is also an elected official. They need voters, number one. And, and number two, some sense of transparency, because this is this is not typical. Something is going on. It's unusual. Yep. They don't have to give away the whole case. They should have some kind of statement. I don't care if it takes a week uh, for your lawyers to approve it, but they got to put out something. They there's something, some kind of conflict, something sketchy going on. I feel like they owe it to us. They owe it to Sandra. We, we should know whether there's a problem with the district attorney's office. Is there a problem with the state police? What is the problem that the attorney general took over? I mean, I think we have a right to know. I, I really do. I don't know what you think, Mizzy. I do. I uh, especially what's going on right now with the Karen Reed case. There is all also there's already this big storm of of them being corrupt. So if there's more corruption, the public should know. The public needs to know if that they're cover what other crimes are they covering up? If they've already covered up 
the O'Keefe Reed case and they're, they're covering up the Sandra Birchmore case, there's an issue that the public needs to know. Yeah. We absolutely have a right to know. So I, I think that's one thing people could be doing too is hitting up the DA's office. Maybe do some FOIA requests. Uh, you know, just they I'm sure maybe they they probably discussed it among themselves why they were handing it over to the AG. Who knows? I mean, I think we should be asking them more and asking the press to do their job on this. Where the hell's the press? I feel like if it was the 1985, we would know because one of these press people would find out for us. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I haven't been, been able to go down to um, the Karen Reed, any of the Karen Reed, um, not standouts, but like at her trial um, hearings. And I've been wanting to, um, not just because I do, I do think that she was, there's a cover up in her case and I, I, I believe she's innocent, but also because I wanted to get something to Ted Daniels because once he realizes something, he kind of, you know, starts doing a dive, but why, why has, I mean, it makes no sense. Like I said, you had a young woman who was groomed and molested by cops and it wasn't like it was one, it was three. Why isn't this story bigger? Yeah, this is, this looks like a, it should be top headlines everywhere. And we're going to be doing more stuff. Um, I, I can only come down every once in a while because I do have health issues. Um, but we're going to be doing more standouts. Her birthday is May 13th. Um, excuse me. I was going to do a, a, a big tribute to her. I can't remember if it's Canton or Stoughton has their big town meeting on the 13th. I know there's some Canton people in here, so they, they might know. So what i want to do is whichever meeting whichever town it is i want for sandra um do a big standout so the people who are going into that meeting the town can see signs and posters for sandra because a lot of people in stoughton don't even realize what happened they don't know when when we were doing our standout there were people who were like staring at our signs like what is going on I was talking to a, um, a a woman from Stoughton, and she said, "There's a lot of people who just don't know about the case. That's crazy. That is insane. That people don't know more about her case. I mean, this should be this should have been like one of those stories that went na uh, national. You know, this this should have been like on the news, being played over and over again across the country." Was it buried? That is the question. Did, you know, chiefs or, or other, you know, people bury it? So the local news didn't cover it. And it takes the local news to get the national news in, involved. And here's another town too, Braintree. Uh, they had a big evidence room audit. It's scandalous. So this stuff is happening quite a bit. Yes, yes. Police and I, I want to thank everybody who's from Canton who voted for the audit because this helps Sandra's case. Because take the letter I was talking about earlier, um, the email that that was that I was told that was sent to um, Morrissey's office that three of the officers might not have agreed with the Massachusetts State Police. They will find that in the audit. So this doesn't just help John O'Keefe's case. This helps Sandra's case. So I, I really, I was cheering for you all, you know, when you guys all won the vote that thank you so much for, you know, the 903 people for voting for that police audit because Canton definitely needs an audit and so does Stoughton. It's funny and how... Yeah, what's going on with that audit? Because it's uh, getting some pushback, and yeah. the people who running it now are the people who have, were opposed to it. Which is just that's how towny these towns are. They mm -hmm. just, um, 
Yeah, we had some other comments too, but I, I guess people, uh, if you have your final questions or comments you want to ask Mizzy tonight, this would be good. Good time. We've asked a lot of good questions. I yeah. I want to thank everyone. Um, if I missed your question, post it again because we because so many comments come in, we don't always get them all. Uh, people are very happy about this show. And again, March twenty third, Saturday, thank one you. to four p.m. Standout, Stoughton uh, Town Hall, the center of Stoughton. They're going to be standing out for Sandra Birchmore. I know some of you are going to be showing up. It's awesome. Let's see more people. Um, we also have the group, the Facebook group, Justice for Sandra Birchmore. We want to get it way over 4,700 after tonight. Please join it. Yeah. Invite all your She's friends. You can invite them. Just hit that invite button right there. You see it on the screen? That's what you got to do on the Facebook. Invite your friends to it. Make sure they show up to this group too. Definitely. And if you're not on Facebook, come follow follow my twitter handle just at sandra birchmore at sandra birchmore i follow that one too so follow it all let's make sure yeah. you're you're on both of them and if you're on tiktok <laughs> come follow me um i think it's I, i'll post it again but i think it's um mizzy b uh, mizzy underscore b because i post a lot on there and it would help be great if people commented and and, and you know liked and you know uh tagged it to duetted my videos because it helps get it out to the public and TikTok's a really good place to get things to go viral thank you everyone who's making um thanking me and and um say i did a good job thank you so much um it means a lot to me and it means a lot whenever our our numbers jump on the page because that means there's more people paying attention to sandra and I've been told by um, her cousin that Sandra would smile and she'd be um, amazed that so many people know her story. And um, there is actually a pretty good YouTuber. Her name is um, um, something Mango. I, I'll have to look it up. Um, and she she has like over a million followers and she covered Sandra's case. And there were people all across the the on the globe who saw Sandra's story and it means a lot. Anyone who comments and shares and, and, and it, it, I can't do it all on my own. You know, I'll put content out there, but it takes the engagement from people to really get her story out there. Uh, the question came up about the case by Barstool. They want to know if it's just on Apple. Is there any other way to listen to it? If you don't have Apple, I'm not sure. I would assume you can, um, whatever uh, way you can listen to it on, like, a, uh, I don't have. Like Spotify. I believe it's on Spotify, too. Possibly. I only, I listen to it on Apple, so I'm not sure. Yeah. I think um, if you just Google it, you will find it. Yeah. I'm sh I mean, I, I would assume that it's got to be on the uh, whatever Android has for their, their system. I assume it's on there. Because they did, they, this is their second season. So, and I, I believe the first season did pretty well too. And you may even be able to find it on the Barstool website. So maybe yeah. check there too. I I believe it's, um. if you're looking for it, I believe there's a link. Don't, don't quote me on, I pinned on. Is Sandra it the case podcast actually? I'm going to look that up. I, I for some um, reason, I think be. it's. I just plug in the case. Let me see. And it's season two, her, her, um, it's for season two. Yeah. If you do the case podcast.com, you'll find it. You'll find it. Uh, it is that that's it. And you can probably listen right off their website. Yeah. And it's I recommend that's a great, great place to start. If you want to like start where, where to dig in for her case. And then I re recommend after that, you read the Stoughton report. It's, it is heavily redacted but you're still, your jaw is going to be on the floor. And then, like I said, read the Canton. The, there's only uh, five reports um, for Canton and then read the, um, the, the Massachusetts state police report. That one is heavily redacted also. Um, part of it is because they taught, I've tried to get more. I tried to get it unredacted, a little more re unredacted. And they said they can't because it's um, about sexual abuse. So look it up the case podcast.com. I mean, I got it. I just put it, put it on the screen for you all too. So you can see it there. 
um, I would definitely check it out. It got uh, seven episodes right on that website. It makes it yeah. easy to listen to it right there. Yep. And it's an easy listen. It's, it's, it's a, you know, you, you definitely like you, you'll probably watch it in one night. You know, it's, or, or listen to it in one night. Cause it's just, it's, a, you know, like your, your jaw is going to be on the floor when you hear everything. Awesome. I want to thank you so much for being here, Mizzy. Um, and I hope, like I said, I hope people, you got to check it out. Check out the Facebook group. Join the Facebook group tonight or invite all your friends if you haven't yet. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. You know, like we said, we tried to do this a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we did a couple of times. And then you got, you, I remember you had some, I had issues. And so it was like, but I think you had COVID at one point. There were some other things. It was just back and forth. Every time we tried to book it, something happened to one yeah, of us. I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now like we're good. Said, Spring is here, and I, I'm feeling good tonight. Like perfect and I think timing because this that you know that, and I recommend everybody go read. Thank you, thank you. Um, I recommend everybody go read the Boston Globe report that just came out because it's it's sickening some of the stuff like we we the two things that i really wanted to promote what was what was in there was that the um the photos and, and videos being sent by from william farwell and also the ag taking over the case but it's it's i'm glad they covered it i'm glad they 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 covered it because it's blown up the story a little bit more going to be interested to see where this goes. I hope you come back and keep us updated. Any development. Yeah. If you, you ever need. want to hear about some of the other cases that I've done, I would love to come back on, especially Brandon's case, because that's a crazy story, too. Is that that's a mass case, too? Mass no, it's, he's out of Norfolk, Virginia, but he's a he's a Navy veteran. OK, so his case needs to get out there more. It's East Coast. I like it. I would yeah. definitely I'd be down to do it. Hit me up. I will definitely. Thank you, everybody. So thank you for all the kind words. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here, Mizzy. And uh, I want to thank everyone who's been supporting the show and uh, donating and subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And also, I want to mention Tuesday, obviously, Karen Reed, uh, big trial day, big court day. They're going to argue the motion to dismiss, the motion to sanction. I can't wait to see what happens there. Uh, probably be broadcasted sometime during the day. I'm going to be working as well. So I'm not sure about during the day. I'm going to try like I always do. But definitely on Tuesday night, we'll be doing the Canton Select Board meeting. Expecting some fireworks at, at that uh, Tuesday night. So yeah. we'll be doing what we can. I, I just thank you, everybody. And I, I can't always be, uh, I know a lot of times people want me in a regular schedule. We do what we can when we can do it. Best thing just make sure you're subscribing and following on our YouTube and our Facebook and checking it out. Like going back there every day to see if we got a new, you know, anything new announced because we go last minute a lot of times. And I, I love you folks that show up no matter what time we post something. So thank you so much for following us and check out the Facebook group justice for Sandra Birchmore. I want, I want to see like, I, I bet I better see like way more people on there tonight. Because you're all here. Like, we got 1,200 people watching right now. I hope I have a couple notifications because I get I get notified every 50. There we go. Let's get some notifications. So, again, I want to thank everyone. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Mizzy, especially. Thank and uh, we'll you. see everyone next time. Thank you so much. I'm going to play this video again on the way out if I can get it up. Because, uh, you know, I just want to promote, promote, promote this whole thing. Thank you, Mizzy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a woman beginning when she was a teenager. And police in Abington just placed an officer on leave. Sources say in connection with this case, WBZ's Beth Germano shows us how the Stoughton police chief is trying to keep those officers from ever working again. I stand before you today as a civil servant who is heartbroken. Stoughton Police Chief Donna McNamara vowing transparency as she details how three officers are accused of abusing their positions of authority to carry out an inappropriate sexual relationship with a young woman for several years. Through a sustained and deliberate com combination of lies, deceit, 
and treachery. The now former officers are William Farwell, pictured here, and his brother Matthew, who they say first met the young woman when she was 13 in a police explorers program. Also accused, former Deputy Chief Robert Devine, all allegedly preying upon a vulnerable teen who looked up to officers. The admiration led her to form relationships with men who were willing to take advantage of her. At age 27, investigators say Matthew Farwell began the relationship with the young woman who was then 15. Texts and explicit exchanges were shared while on duty. Investigators say when he broke off the relationship in February of 2021 when she was 23, she died days later. The medical examiner determining it was suicide and she was pregnant. These men violated their oaths and they are unfit to serve as police officers. The district attorney says without victim testimony, charges are unlikely, saying in a statement, the investigation to date has not developed a prosecutable statutory rape case against any individual. But the chief makes clear what the investigation has developed. The scope of this problem in our agency has been identified and pulled out by the roots. The chief has moved to have the officers immediately decertified so they never serve in another department. In Stoughton, I'm Beth Germano, WBZ What I'm about News. to brief you on is something deeply troubling to me as a human being and as a police chief. Three former Stoughton police officers, the focus of a 19-month-long internal affairs investigation for allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with a young woman who was later found dead inside her home. Sandra Birchmore's body was found on February 4th, 2021. Her death ruled a suicide. But was it? Given the circumstances of her final night and what we know about the last person to see her alive, leave many that have doubt. The fact of the matter is it just doesn't make any sense to me that she would kill herself, and especially knowing she's pregnant. I don't, Sandra wouldn't kill her baby. This is The Case, Season 2, Sandra. Episode 1 drops November 29th. What we found was a historical pattern. The adult, the, the officers with levels of supervision over it were using it as a means of having relationships with young, with teenage girls. The case is available on Apple Podcasts and wherever podcasts can be heard. You can also find us at thecasepodcast.com and on Twitter at thecasepodcast. How many people should have protected her and they didn't. And she expected these men to and one after another just, just let her down and ruined her.